Yo, what's going on, guys? It's Houston Sports Talk back another video today. To the Houston Texans, beat the Buffalo Bills 23 to 20. What a win for the Texans! What a win for the Texans to go out there and get this win. Um, when again, uh, I'm I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. I said it this morning uh, when when talking about last week's game against the Jaguars. Another game where their offensive line basically wanted them to lose. I mean, so many false starts and holding calls, but yet again. Yet again, C.J. Stroud, even though he struggled a little bit in this game, um, was able to get the job done for the Texans. Um, yeah, I mean it was it was a, it was a rough second half. It's a, this is another this is another game for the Texans. Similar score, final score as well. I mean, last week it was twenty four to twenty against the Jags, twenty three to twenty this week against the Bills, where they play really strong in the first half. We saw that last week against against Jacksonville. Uh, offense looks pretty good, but then there's like a little bit of a long run in the. In the, in the in the second half where their offense just completely looks terrible and and we saw that for most of the first half or sorry for most of the second half last week against Jacksonville until the Texans took the lead and scored a touchdown last week to take the lead against Jacksonville and this offense looked pretty bad up until the last the last couple drives um and it still wasn't perfect um you know it, this this is I think this is a little bit different I mean this is more the defense stepping up and getting the job done than the offense. Uh, you know, last week the defense did their things. You know, they did a couple of decent things, like there was the fourth down stop, there was a sack, there was a couple of different things the defense did, a couple of nice third down, you know, stops to, you know, help the Texans offense stay in the game and just not completely blow that game against Jacksonville last week. So that was good. But this week it was a little bit different. This week the defense was doing more and to go out there and you know just 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 do more than they did last week because this offense was was worse than it was in this. If you look in the second half, the offense was worse today in the second half than they were last week in the second half, and uh, the penalties were just as bad. C.J. Stroud last week played just as good. You know, um, you know pl- played amazing last week in the second half, even though the offensive line was letting him down. This week. He didn't play that great. I mean, he he made some good throws here and there, but you know, threw an interception, had a bunch of mistakes. So, but even though those mistakes happened, and you know, also the fact that you know the the you know the, the interception, the penalties, all the stuff that happened in this game in the second half, the Texans still win the ball game uh, thanks to C.J. Stroud making some nice throws in this game early on um, and making some decent throws later on. And, of course, m- probably, I mean, I love C.J. Stroud, and I, I love Nico Collins, and I love what uh, those two have been doing this year. So appreciative, and both, both oh, I don't know, because I see C.J. Stroud is so underrated. But, but Nico Collins is so underrated, and Stroud is doing a fantastic job. But my favorite story of the year so far for the Houston Texans and I won't say my favorite player on the team, but my favorite story and this favorite thing I've been watching this year has been Kaimi Farron I've loved to see the takeoff he has had, and this this game was on another level. I mean, it starts off with a 50-yard field goal for Fairbairn, uh, which is great, but then a 47-yard field goal. And this was this was one. This wasn't a normal 47-yard field goal to take a 17-point lead. This was a 47-yard field goal to make. Kaimi, the leading scorer in Texans franchise history. Congratulations to Kaimi. I mean, he's been the Texans kicker since 2017, seven years. I believe he's probably the longest tenured Houston Texans kicker of all time. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I'm not 100% on, sure on that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's correct. Uh, and and then just, you know, even though he already hit a 50-yarder and he hit a 47-yarder to become the leading scorer of all time for the Texans, um, but then he taps it off with a 59-yard game winner, which, was, which wasn't which was very far from his career high. Career high was 61 yards before that. And it was such a good kick for him. There was, there was, a, there was a five-yard throw to DeRay and go all the way uh, right before that kick. And I'm so confident in Kaimi that if Stroud wasn't able to connect to DeRay on that on that throw, let's just say DeRay wasn't able to catch it. it was a over, let's say it was an overthrow by Stroud or DeRay dropped that. And it would have been a 64 yarder for for Kaimi. I'm confident Kaimi would have made it for 64 yards and would have 
made his career long. You know, his his fifty nine yarder would have been good from sixty four. So that's that's unbelievable for him. It's, he's he's had such a good year. Now I forgot to mention tough blow for the Texans, and of course it happened in this game. Nico Collins uh, got hurt his hamstring. It's nothing you want to see when he's playing the way he's played. I mean, he had, he had only two receptions today. He still had eighty receiving yards. That's, that's how much of a monster this guy is. Honestly, if I were the Texans, I know. This is something maybe you guys don't want to hear as fans, just like I don't want to really say as a fan. But I don't know if you really want to play him next week against the Patriots. The Patriots have looked terrible. Uh, even though the Texans have struggled these last two weeks, I'm confident that without Nico Collins, the Texans could you know, potentially go out there and, and beat the crap out of New England, even without Nico Collins. Because uh, you still have Stefan Diggs, you still have Tank Dale, you still have Robert Woods, uh, you still have other really talented players on the team. So I, I think the Texans could still handle the Patriots easily. It, you know, if if Nico's not able to go, um, obviously I hope it's not serious for Nico. Um, but honestly, I don't care if he doesn't play next week against the Patriots. It's a tough matchup against Christian Gonzalez, and it's a team the Texans can beat easy without Nico. So. Um, not too sure if I want to see Nico out there next week, knowing the Texans can take care of business against the Patriots. Don't want to see him re-aggravate that injury if it's not too serious. But who knows? It could be a serious injury for Nico. But let's all pray it isn't. All right, scoring summary, Tyler Bass, 38-yard field goal to make it 3-0 to zero is the first score of the ball game. But Cam Akers with a 15-yard touch around 7-3, his second touchdown score of the year. CJ Stroud threw a 67-yard touchdown pass to Nico Collins. We've seen Nico do some great things. We've seen CJ make some great throws. But this is really the first deep, deep ball throw, like really deep ball throw that we've seen those two connect on this year. Like, like, you know, some of the plays we saw last year where it was like the touchdown pass against Indianapolis. We saw so many big plays like that last year. We've seen some big plays from, you know, from Shad to Nico this year, but not a big play like that. And that was huge for this for this Texans team. Changes everything in this ballgame. It's 14-3. to Kaimi Farrenbairn made a 50-yard field goal going to halftime at 17-3. 47-yarder to be the leading scorer um, in eleven in the third quarter, in eleven minutes remaining, twenty to three. James Cook five yard touchdown run. Josh Allen thirty sorry forty nine yard touchdown pass to Keon Coleman twenty to seventeen. Fourth quarter, uh, Tyler Bass ties the ball game up with three minutes thirty three yarder twenty twenty. And I already mentioned Kaimi's game winning fifty nine yard field goal. All right, game leaders Josh Allen. Another bad game for Josh Allen last week was terrible against Baltimore. This week is terrible against Houston. Nine for 30, 131 passing yards, one touch. And the weirdest thing is seeing Josh Allen go nine for 30. Stroud, 28 for 38, 331 passing yards. His second straight game with over 300, one passing touchdown, one interception. James Cook led the game in rushing yards for the Bills and both teams. 20 carries, 82 rushing yards, one touchdown. Cam Akers had nine carries, 42 rushing yards, one touchdown. Um, Cam Akers, if he got 20 carries, he might have he might have had over 82. Receiving yards, Keon Coleman led the Bills in receiving yards. This uh, this shows how bad of a day it was. Uh, 49 receiving yards, and it was the touchdown catch. Only one reception for Keon Coleman. Stephon Diggs showed the new Buffalo Bills wide receivers how to do it, um, as he did pass Nico Collins, who had 80. He had six receptions for 82 receiving yards. Great day for Diggs against his former team. Didn't get a touchdown, but still was a good day. Dure Ungubalawe, 15 carries, 30 rushing yards. Stroud ran for 27 rushing yards. Josh Allen, one of the best rushing quarterbacks of all time, 54 rushing yards. So that was terrific. Um, really one of the only good things he did today outside of throwing a 49-yard touchdown pass. All right, I went over Nico Collins, who had 78 receiving yards, not 80. That's my bad. Uh, Dre and Gualloway, six receptions, 57 receiving yards. Another great receiving day for him. Tank Dell, four receptions, 38 receiving yards. Good to just have him back and healthy. He's going to have to step up next week in New England if there's no Nico Collins. Because because Dig that means Diggs has to go up against Christian Gonzalez. Those two know each other, being in the same division last year. Uh, so you got to hope that Tank Dell can step up next week, potentially, if there's no Nico. Four receptions and 34 receiving yards for Dalton Schultz. Xavier Hutchinson with two receptions for 31 receiving yards. And two receptions for both Cade Stauver and Cam Akers. Six yards for Cade, five for Cam. 
Uh, fumble was lost in this game, C.J. Stroud. So that's what I'm talking about, the turnovers. Stroud lost a fumble. He threw an interception, so he wasn't perfect in the second half. Both of those turnovers were in the second half. It was recovered by Dorian Williams. Uh, the interception was by Terrell Bernard. Our uh, uh, tackles, Aziz al Shahir, eight tackles, one tackle for loss. I talked about in my in my pregame how important he is because he was questionable with an illness. I said they need him to play. I don't know if they win this game if it's if 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 not for him. And uh, you know, he's big for our defense. Derek Stingley Jr. seven tackles. Henry Tota O oh, six tackles. Only one sack for this defense. That was Khalil Davis. He had two tackles for loss. Seven tackles for loss. That one for Aziz al Shahir. One for. Uh, Foley Futukasi, one for Kamari Lassiter, two for Khalil Davis, one for Jimmy Ward, and one for Will Anderson. Uh, seven tackles for loss for the Bills as well. I'm not going to go over them all, though. Terrell Bernard had the only interception in this game, which he returned for one yard, thrown by CJ Stroud. Let me know your thoughts on the Texans beating the Bills 23-20 in the comment section, and peace out.